What is going on, you two people? Northeast Ohio Cards and Comics here for a little mail day slash card show pickups. Uh, I teased this on a live stream about a week ago. I was planning on doing this video last week, and then all the fanatic stuff happened. PWCC eBay happened. Needless to say, a lot of things popped up last week. Uh, but I have like two or three mail days and a bunch of card show pickups uh, to go over. So that's pretty much going to be today's video. I uh, got a ton of stuff, not a ton, but a decent stack of stuff. And once again, if you follow me on Instagram, it's in the description down below. Uh, I do usually spoil this stuff on IG because I can't resist taking pictures of it and posting it. Uh, so if you ever want a sneak peek at maybe mail days to come, Good way to see it. And like I said, if you were at the very tail end of one of the live streams, uh, I think after the eBay PWCC stuff, I forget which live stream it was, I did uh, a quick little spoiler tour of some of this stuff. So uh, like, comment, sub, all the YouTube stuff down below, and let's go ahead and get into it. And like I said, this spans a few weeks. I'll try to remember where everything came from and what... Uh, if any of them were trade, most of these were cash purchases. Uh, a couple of them were online, and then there was a card show deal. One of the big things that happened in the last couple of weeks was I went to the Xenia Ohio show, and at the Xenia show, um, one of the guys that has bought for me in the past was there and bought a bunch of one hundred dollar to two hundred dollar slabs off me at eighty percent eBay comps. I've talked about this before. Dealt with the guy before, super easy to deal with on both sides. I comp everything out. He double checks a couple numbers, make sure everything looks good. We take 20% off. Depending on kind of where it falls, we might wiggle it 5 or $10 either way to get it on an even number. He gives me the cash. I give him the cards. We move on. Uh, so I picked up like $1,600 uh, across two deals with him at the Xenia show. That gave me pack cash in my pocket to... Uh, by two different cards, actually. Uh, I guess we'll talk about those first. We'll come back, and that's kind of in chronological order. The other thing that happened was, is you know, I made a video about it. I sold the blue Vlad refractor uh, for uh, thirty four hundred cash. I netted out thirty five after shipping because uh, it was expensive to ship because I next dated it and I paid for insurance on it. Uh, so shipping on that card was almost a hundred dollars, but I didn't have to pay any eBay fees or anything, any PayPal fees, nothing. It was a straight cash deal through Zelle. So I didn't have to worry about dealing with any of that. So it, it all balanced out in the end. So that was $3,300. Um, so with that, I guess we'll start with that. And then we'll go back to the card show deal. So with that $3,300, I essentially bought... Um, Yeah, these three cards. I'm sorry, five cards. First, I've talked about it numerous times. Uh, did the video on it. Trey Young stuff to me seemed undervalued. This was a couple weeks ago. His stuff still looks a little cheap on PSA 9 specifically. Uh, but I loaded up on Trey Young Silver Prism PSA 9s. So uh, one of these was a My Slabs deal. And then two of them were off Instagram. I bought them from the same seller. So we have one PSA 9 silver tray. And I got these. These three averaged out to 365 a piece, I think. 370 a piece. So that's one. A second one. And a third one. Uh, once again, I like buying in multiples because it gives me the ability to sell them off in pieces and parts, uh, the ability to potentially keep one if I want to, uh, while taking the profit on the other ones, and then I could get a little bit more risky with, with some of the others. Uh, so these were kind of no-brainer purchases based off of what tens were going for, and I just feel like trade kind of hit his bottom. The other trade play that I made, and this one I might actually hold on to unless it really went high, then maybe I would move it. Uh, Optic Hollow PSA 10. Uh, I'm a big fan of Optic Color. Always have been, always will be. These cards are criminally underrated compared to their silver counterparts. Um, 
for example, this in a PSA 10, I got for just under a thousand dollars. I think I got it at 970 out the door uh, with shipping and everything. And this was an IG deal as well, I believe. This is like pop 150, I think. Uh, optic, as I've talked about a lot on the channel, very tough grades. And absolutely love these cards. So that was about 20 or about 18, right around 2K in tray cards, give or take. So picked all those up. Uh, this one's already up to, like I said, this was about two weeks ago when I bought it. I think last one of these did 1300. These are still sitting slightly about above what I paid for them. Uh, like I said, I think I got into these for 360 or 370. And I think that's about what they're doing right now, give or take. But I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, so a lot of silver on the screen. The other thing that I snagged, two other things that I snagged, uh, was a Luca Optic Hollow PSA 9. Uh, this was at the Rated Rip show uh, the day after the Xenia show, I believe. I don't remember. There's been a lot of shows in Ohio the last couple weeks. Um, but snag this. I've talked about Luca Optic Hollows before. This is actually my second one. That's the one I picked up at the National back there. Uh, this one's actually better centered, so I probably hold on to this one. But PSA 9 Optic Hollow uh, comps were around 950 to 970 on it. Uh, the guy had it stickered for 1100. Uh, I offered him nine, I think. Yeah, I said, would you take nine? He countered 950, and I said, deal. Uh, seemed fair enough. Uh, once again, huge fan of Optic Hollows, huge fan of Luca, and I have no problem buying PSA nines of cards. Um, it's perfectly acceptable, especially on stuff like this. Uh, these cards are always in demand. I will have no problem moving these most likely when I go to go to sell them. Uh, and now with, I really like the idea of having two optic hollows because if this spikes up, I would really like to keep one because I do like Luca as a long-term hold. So this was about another, let's basically call it thousand ish close to a thousand. So these three car or these four cards put me just under, um, 3k the three silvers were about a grand a little under this was a little under a grand and this was a little under a grand also at the xenia show i picked up a baker mayfield national treasures rpa booklet i believe i've showed this off in a different video already but Pick this up as well for 480 in cash uh, from Logan that works at Card Collector 2. Uh, he was set up down there and he had this. He actually, so I think I told this story before. I can't remember. Um, he had one in the case. Someone else was dealing for it. I really wanted it, but didn't want to interrupt him. He had 500 sticker on it and the guy was trading for it. Uh, they consummated the deal and I was like, well, missed out on that. Walked around the show for a little bit, came back, uh, was talking to Logan for a minute and said, oh, I really wanted, I was going to make a play on that Baker RPA, the booklet. And he goes, oh, well, I have another one. <laughs> so he had a second one. They just didn't have a chance to put it back out in the case yet. And this one actually had a nicer patch on it, in my opinion. So I picked this up for 480. So essentially the Vlad blue that I was into for $2,100. I sold for 3,300, 34 cat. You know, like I said, I had to spend hundred on shipping. So 3,300, I basically turned the Vlad blue. The numbers are close enough. I, I could be like a hundred bucks off one way or the other uh, by the time I actually added everything up, but it's pretty darn close. I essentially turned the Vlad blue into all of this. So, the Vlad Blue turned into one, two, three, four, five, six cards, um, all pretty decent. You know what I mean? Like Trey Silver Prism PSA 9s, Opticolo PSA 10, Luca Opticolo PSA 9, uh, a Baker Mayfield NT booklet out of 99 on card auto. So I feel like I turned that pretty well. 
Uh, I took the money from that. And like I said, when I sold the Vlad Blue, the reason why I sold it was I thought that I could do more with the $3,400 than I could just sitting on the Vlad Blue. And so my, in my opinion, and I'll be curious, chat or uh, YouTube viewers, do you agree? Would you rather have the Vlad Blue or this stuff? To me, this stuff has way more upside in it and less risk because I'm spread across three players. Now, I'm a little heavy on Trey Young, but I don't think there's going to be anything to tank Trey Young's value in the next three months. Maybe it goes down a little bit, but in general, between now and the start of the NBA season, I only see Trey Young slowly going up. Um, you know, Luca is Luca and Baker. This could go either way. If he comes out hot, this thing could go to the moon, or if he comes out cold, this thing could crash down. This is the riskiest card of the entire purchase. So I turned the Vlad Blue into this. Three Trey Silver PSA 9s, Optic Hollow PSA 10, Optic Hollow PSA 9, and the Baker Booklet. Uh, the last pickup was at the Youngstown Holiday Inn show this past Sunday. Uh, let me rewind that a little bit. The day before Saturday at Hartville, um, one of the vendors that is usually there was set up. They had a Baker Mayfield booklet just like this one. Uh, slightly different patch, obviously. Uh, they had 680 on it, which is a fair ish asking price because the last comp is actually 650. So the last one of these did 650 on eBay not too terribly long ago. Actually, about the day before I bought this one. Uh, the last comp was 650 on it. I thought about making a move for it, but I didn't really want to spend 650 on it uh, or even try to negotiate them down to like, you know, mid fives or around six or whatever. I thought like, you know, 550 to 575 sounded like a pretty fair price to me. But it was the only card I really was super interested in at the show, and I just kind of felt like I was forcing it. So I let it go. I didn't, I didn't really think much of it. And then driving down to the Youngstown show the next day, I was like, man, I should have maybe soft. Maybe I could trade into that Baker or something, whatever. We'll see what we ha see today. And that was part of the other reason I didn't want to do a cash deal for it is because I wanted to still keep money open for the Sunday show. So go to the Sunday show. Didn't see a ton. A couple things caught my eye. Uh, the Youngstown show. But the same dealer from the day before was set up at that show. And he still had the Baker booklet. I walked around for a little bit. I came back to him and I said, hey, I have this Baker RPA. And I pulled out my Panini 1 out of 125, uh, two-color patch, on-card auto, uh, still encased from Panini 1. And I said, I'd like to upgrade this into the booklet. I'll give you this plus what cash number gets me into the booklet. Uh, and I was talking to the guy and... He looked at it and he's like, okay, like this is legit, like nice two color. He liked that it was two color patch, liked that it was on card. Um, and he said, tell me what number you're thinking. And I said 150. So that would have been, and I was putting 400 trade value on the Panini one because one had recently just sold for 400. So there was a recent comp on it. I said, I'm thinking this $400 trade value plus 150 cash uh, to get it done. And he goes, we're pretty close. I was thinking 180. I said, all right, let me think about it. 180 was a little more than I wanted to put into it cash-wise. I came back after about 15 minutes, and I said 165. He said 170, and I wasn't going to argue over $5. So I pulled the trigger on a second <laughs> Baker booklet. So I guess I'm cornering the market on Baker Mayfield NT booklets. Now, why did I do this when I already have this one? Now, I always talk about, you know, buy multiples or whatever, but... There's a reason for it. So I actually like the original one that I got better. Uh, this first one that I got at Xenia, I think I like the auto better. Uh, the patch is very similar. Someone on IG said it looks like I'm trying to play Tetris. They actually kind of link up. The main reason why I traded the one Panini one and cash for this one was simply put, I was into the Panini one for next to nothing. I traded a Eloy purple for it that I paid 200 bucks for that. I got 400 trade value for, for the Panini one. And I got cash on top. 
I got 60 bucks in that deal to national. I traded the purple Eloy and I got 60 in cash for the Panini one Baker RPA. So essentially I was into the Baker RPA, the Panini one for $140. So when you factor that in that my investment cost into the Baker, our Panini one RPA was 140 bucks. And then you tack on the 170 on top of that. Uh, that puts me at what? 310, essentially, right? Yes, 310. Math is hard. Uh, that puts me at 310 total, you know, 140 from the initial plus 170 from cash out of my pocket to pick this up. So now I'm into this for essentially $310. To me, this has way more upside than the Panini One does. I like Panini One. I like Panini One RPAs. I think they are a very good entry-level RPA. They're nice quality. They're usually nice patches. They're on-card autos. But I feel like an NT booklet out of 99 has way more wow factor to it than a Panini One RPA does. Because the thing I don't like about the Panini Ones are there is a lot of different versions of it, especially when you factor in like Panini One, plus there's encased. They all kind of look the same. They're numbered, but, you know, they all kind of look fairly similar to each other. In my opinion, there's not a lot of differential between them besides the numbering. There's nothing, no extra sex appeal to the different, like the out of 99 versus the 125 versus the 75. Whereas this is an NT, National Treasures. It is a booklet, which get a little disrespected for some reason. I really don't know why. They look great. Um. But an NT booklet out of 99, I feel like has way more growth potential and way more liquidity on the back end than a Panini One RPA does. And the fact that I'm into this for 310 bucks makes it even better. The other thing that I liked about it is that I was moving Baker for Baker. I already have, as is well publicized, a lot of Baker Mayfield stuff. So moving Baker for Baker, for a better Baker, in my opinion, I felt pretty okay about that because I wasn't adding more Baker exposure. I was just getting better Baker exposure with what I already had. So that's the reason why I did it. So I'm into this one for 310 bucks. I'm into this one for 480 bucks. So essentially I'm into them 800 bucks total across the two. So you cost average that down. I'm into each one of these for $400. The thing I really like about it is, as is well publicized, I'm big on Baker. One, I think he's too cheap. Two, I just generally like the player and I like to collect him because I'm a Browns fan. If Baker's stuff went absolutely crazy, say the Browns come out, they're 6-0, and he is on fire, the team looks great, I know myself, it's going to be very hard for me to want to sell Baker cards. But since I have two of these now, it makes my life a lot easier because I will gladly, if his stuff doubles or triples in price, I will gladly move this one and gladly keep this one. So that's the reason I grabbed the second one. If I had to pay straight cash for it out of pocket uh, at like the 570 ish that he was valuing it at, I, I would have passed. The only reason I went into it is because I was able to trade the Panini one for it. And I was into the Panini one for such a low, low value. And that's why I traded for that card in the first place at the national, because I had the Eloy purple, which for me is going to be harder to move than a Baker RPA is uh, at least locally. I knew that I could hold on to the Baker RPA and have no trouble having someone interested in that card here more so than an Eloy purple. Eloy Purple is a fantastic card, but to be able to move that locally is going to be a lot harder than a Baker RPA. Once again, I talked about it in the video last Saturday or this past Saturday. When I walk into the room, I want to be able to be as appealing. The cards that I have, I want to appeal to as many people in the room as possible. And Eloy Purple does not appeal to that many people at a card show here in Cleveland or a trade night. A Baker Panini 1 RPA 80 to 90% of the room is going to be interested in it, especially a dealer 
because a dealer knows that they can move that card extremely easily around here. So that's the reason why I made the trade at the national. And then that's the reason why I re upgraded. Uh, Cause to me, the Baker book NT booklet has way more upside to it than the Panini one. Yeah. I had to put a little cash on top, but I was into the Panini one so cheap. It doesn't matter. So those are my pickups. Those are my thought processes behind them. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, like comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Catch you guys and girls on the next one. Peace.